Well, welcome to Partners in Ministry. My name's Dan Smith, and today I'll be talking with Joe Willoughby. Joel and his wife, Beth, live in Ankeny, Iowa, and are currently raising five children, Roger, Isaiah, Valerie, Hannah, and one on the way. He's currently enrolled in the Doctorate of Ministry program at Faith Baptist Theological Seminary. Joel has been a pastoral intern and has served in faith-based addiction recovery programs, scripture-based counseling, and Christian FM radio. Joel's also taught junior high and senior high students for seven years at Ankeny Christian Academy. Brains and Bible is dedicated to strengthening and equipping churches for the work of ministry. Outside of family, theology, and teaching, Joel loves coffee and even roasts his own beans. Well, welcome, Joel, and thanks for joining me today. Hey, thank you. My pleasure. Just to get things kicked off here, why don't you give us a little brief history of Brains and Bibles? How did it get started? Yeah, so uh, what's funny is um, in two, late 2018, I get married, and then um, my wife is encouraging me to uh, do something more substantial for work. I was just kind of, yeah, some here and there stuff uh, during the summers because I was a Christian school teacher. And so I, um, I listened to her wisdom, and I thought, okay, I can do that. And, uh, but I want to do something more meaningful. Uh, something with more of my skill set and because mm-hmm. I would just do like little, you know, menial tasks and things. Uh, and so I, I pursued what would be most helpful uh, within the body of Christ. Uh, and that was a journey that started in the spring of 2019. And then it culminated uh, March 2020, uh, right? This COVID lockdown. That was the time I needed because we had spring break and then it was the lockdown started. Uh, and that was all the time I needed to finalize everything with getting a board director's nonprofit tax exempt status, you know, the whole nine yards. Uh, so that was really exciting. But then there was nowhere to go <laughs> because of the, the, the lockdown. So I, I started a YouTube channel. So that started in March 2020 and because it was the only way to do anything. Uh, but then as I got into churches, mainly in 21 and then the snowball started rolling, uh, I fine tuned uh, the ministry a little bit because I saw more specific needs. And so I started out very general and then began to narrow that down. Uh, but it still is a general sense in when I describe it because um, every church is unique. Every local body is unique. And so I just try to meet a church where they're at and help them grow from there. Just uh, strengthen them in, in a various number of ways. Uh, but I focus on the work of the ministry, which is evangelism, discipleship, Bible study. Yeah, so all those things, they, they're very uh, interrelated. Sure. Yeah. I, I know you can speak uh, firsthand that when God has calls us to do something, he's also mm-hmm. used the past to prepare us uh, to be able yes. to do that. So what what journey has God taken you on to prepare you to be the executive director of this new ministry? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, you know, we'll, we'll go way back, but I'll try to keep it brief. And uh, even as a uh, high schooler, uh, teenager, um, I ended up falling into the ways of the world. Uh, it was a slow fade. Um, from knowing Christ when I was young and just nothing was going on. I, the world appealed to me, but it was never satisfying. Uh, I was always empty, miserable, broken, just trying to fill myself with happiness and it just wasn't working. Um, and then 18 after high school, the Lord just humbled me, uh, basically took every single thing away from me. Uh, and it was a wonderful experience because it, he humbled me and broke me in a way that he could use me and begin to mold me. Um, so that, that kind of developed a hunger um, a, a fierce hunger, I could say, for the person and word of God to know him, to work for him, uh, to love him, you know. And so I, I pursued uh, a lot of different things, lots of ministry, uh, pursued education and things like that. Uh, got married right after college, um, you know, a lot of people do. Uh, and then we you know, had a couple of kids, uh, moved to uh, Iowa, where I went to seminary uh, over here in Ankeny. Uh, but then in 2017, um, my wife had a heart issue. It's called long QT syndrome. There wasn't much information about it. We didn't know that's what it was at the time. Uh, essentially, um, she would just have a seizure once in a while. We didn't know why, but what it was is she was going into cardiac arrest. And, um, and so there was 45 minutes, her heart was stopped and whole brain swelling damage, um, catastrophic, what they said. That was on a Tuesday night. That Friday, uh, the Lord took her home on her 29th birthday. And uh, then I was left behind with... Um, uh, little Isaiah that just turned four about three weeks earlier, and then Roger that was going to turn six uh, a couple months later. So that was uh, quite the challenge. But um, as as the Word of God says, His grace is sufficient for you, um, and it sure was. And so a lot of times we can replace that word grace with strength. And He strengthened me uh, in a lot of different ways. He molded me. 
Um, I, I learned firsthand a lot of apologetics, you know, <laughs> uh, that kind of a thing, going through these struggles. I have a whole new respect for single parents and things uh, after going through that. Sure. But Lord knew I was needy. And uh, so I was only single for 15 months. And, and then uh, there's a lady that she was already a friend of the family. You know, we already did ministry together, the church and stuff. So a lot of that basic stuff was out of the way. Uh, so dating was a lot quicker. And, and so um, I ended up marrying Beth. And then we've had uh, now a couple other children, uh, Valerie and Hannah. And then uh, just this last August in uh, 2023, we did have a miscarriage. And so another way that, you know, I learned something firsthand, um, I knew I, I always have a scripture answer, you know, typically, uh, but when you live through something, it's a whole nother element. And um, it's, it's good, though. I think the Lord, uh, one of the reasons he allows things like this is so that we can comfort others. We experience his comfort and then we comfort others as Second Corinthians 1, essentially. And um, we are uh, allowed now to do more and better ministry. We're more effective uh, in different areas. So that was a privilege as well, already being able to speak with lots of different people. And then now we have another one on the way. And so the Lord still blesses with life. And uh, that was a, uh, and is a still a precious life. I try to remind people, hey, is, is God the God of the living or the God of the dead, right? And that's, that's from scripture too. He's the God of the living. And so um, I have not met this child yet personally, but I look forward to the day that I do. Sure. That's an exciting thing. So those are some big moments there uh, that really shaped me. And um, I'm looking forward to the next way that the father chooses to make me more like his son, Jesus Christ. That's going to be exciting. <laughs> when, you, when you look at strengthening and equipping a church, um, there's a couple of ways of looking at it. One is the, you know, the, the organization itself. The other is the individuals within it. And it, you know, it sounds like some of the personal experiences you've had, Beth has brought, other people have had, uh, would allow you also to customize some of what you're doing to the individual's so when, when you come in and your program comes into church, what does that look like? How, how are you doing this ministry? So I always have a conversation first with the pastor or whoever's leading. Uh, sometimes there is no pastor and there's different terms. Some people say elders uh, and elder can mean different things to different churches. A pastor can mean different things to different churches, you know. Yeah. Um, so you, you have to learn that church and what's going on and just have a conversation about, you know, where are we at? Um, and we all have the same goal because of scripture, essentially the, the ultimate goal. Um, but what are we working on right now? And, uh, how can I help you? And sometimes there's just a lack of direction and I can help give direction. Um, and sometimes there's, you know, some intense counseling situations that I can advise with, um, uh, things like that. But it usually starts with, I come in on, you know, usually like a Sunday morning. And, um, if I'm allowed two services, well, let's say if I'm allowed one service, it's my ministry presentation which includes preaching and kind of talk, what, what do I do? And then at the end of it, it's the, the heartbeat of brains of Bibles, which I go to Mark 12, 20 through 30 as a springboard and uh, where Christ gives the greatest commandment and, you know, love God, follow your heart, mind, soul, strength. And I say, I'm not going to minimize the other things. I'm just going to emphasize one, loving God with our minds and show how the mind is the engine of the train. It leads everything. Uh, how can you love someone you don't know? Right. And so loving God with all your mind becomes sort of the primary, the, the paramount idea. And so I go into that sort of thing. If I'm allowed two services, then uh, for the other one, I'll give my worldviews presentation and just show, um, you know, where we ought to be, uh, where we need to help others get to and um, how to get them there. So when we, when we have different kind of conversations with people that trust in Christ or don't, um, we, we need to learn their worldview, where they're at. We need to know where we're at. So we know what kind of a bridge we need to make uh, to best communicate with them. Uh, we want people to uh, know the person and word of God better. And so that's, that's a, in a nutshell, that's the idea. And then we go from there because it could be different things. Depends on what's the most pressing need or what we're working with at the time. And um, we go on, but I do a lot of conferences and things, and I, I hope to provide some um, curriculum later on. Uh, right now with conferences, I give like these booklets away. They're like um, 30, 40 pages. <laughs> and so it's a pretty substantial deal. Um, and I never charge for anything. I just, if, if there's a need and you want me to help, I will do it. And I make it known that I live off donations and it's amazing how God just balances things out and takes care of me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What kinds of transformations are you seeing happening in the lives of either the church or the people that you're working with? What, what's some of the feedback that you're getting? There are, um, and the tricky thing about this is a lot of times, um, the most, uh, significant things I have to keep private. You know, um, and that's the, the sort of the deal of it. But uh, in general, you know, I, I've seen I've seen whole churches become more united 
Mm -hmm. uh, where there was some divisions before. And they've come together because we have a common goal. Um, I get them excited for, uh, well, you know, the Holy Spirit does it, uses me, but uh, getting them excited for things like sharing the gospel and knowing how to do it, being properly equipped to do it. So then you're confident, you're excited to do it or making disciples among each other. Um, and then, of course, that involves the Bible studies, my big three things there. That goes on how to study the Bible, how to do these things. Um, it gets people excited. And so then now they're all excited for the same thing um, as the ultimate purpose and just serving and knowing God. And uh, that brings churches together. And that's an amazing thing. And then in making all that a lifestyle, that really changes things. It's not just, you know, you don't just do the God stuff, you know, when you show up to a church service or, you know, when the pastor's looking, you know, kind of thing. You know, so it's, it's a holistic idea, you know, lifestyle. This is habitual. This is who we are. This is our identity. Um, that's fundamental. There's been individuals that have come up, lots of individuals, you know, sometimes even tears in the eyes. And um, they just felt so helpless before. I never knew how to reach this family member that's that's struggling in this big way. Now I feel like I can. Um, I, I felt so crippled. I, I knew I should share the gospel. I always felt so guilty about it, but I just don't know how. And I'm so embarrassed. You know, now I do. Um, you know, it, things like that. And so it goes on. Even people that say I, I I never realized that I, just a regular person, could actually study and know the Word of God to understand it for myself. Sure. Um, and those are beautiful moments. And that happens a lot, actually. Uh, and it's pretty exciting. And just to, when I'm teaching, just to see the Lord work in their lives as they, you know, they have that, that moment where their eyes pop open, they understand, you know, um, that's a beautiful thing. I, I'll never get old. And uh, I, I love it. So lots of transformations. Uh, I, I look at, um, I try to look at the whole church. And uh, of course, that starts with individuals, right? But, um, you know, I, I want that whole church healthy and strong, because, you know, as Paul would compare it to the, the actual physical body, um, you know, if one one part of your body, if that ankle out a joint or something, uh, it's going to mess up the whole body. You know, so you want you want to help fix all these little pieces and you'll have a beautiful whole. Sure. I'm always amazed at how um, surprising God is when he shows up through the Holy Spirit, when we provide him the opportunity to communicate through us. And, uh, you yeah, know, you, you go, did they sit in the same place sermon that I just did or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's really cool. Yeah, um, yes. you know, so it sounds like there's a lot, there's a lot of coaching that, that's going on either collectively or, or individually. Um, do you have much opportunity to do follow-up work um, after you're gone? Right. I, I try to do this. Um, I'm working at, on ways of doing it better. Um, but one of the things I do want to do is I, I don't want to be a, a one and done type person. I don't want to come in and just be the special speaker for a conference and you'll never see me again. Um, I do want to have a relationship. Um, I do receive support from churches and individuals. I, I really try to push for church support because it does uh, provide that relationship, that accountability back and forth two ways. Uh, I want that too. I, I want that relationship. I want that accountability on myself. Uh, ask me questions. Make sure I'm doing what's right um, and you know, not, not wasting resources and whatnot. Um, and then also I want to be able to, you know, dig back into your, your lives a bit and make sure it's actually taking root. You know, if I do a conference on how to share the gospel and, and teach how evangelism is a lifestyle, it's who we are. We just share Christ. Um, then I want to make sure that that's actually, you know, happening. Now, now I know hundred percent of the church. Okay. That's a, that's a rough goal. Um, but the majority, like this is the identity of the church. I, I want to see that happening. Um, and, and, with a lot of a lot of uh, relationships with pastors or, or whoever the leader is of the church um, and uh, to really work with them. In fact, I have a pastoral mentorship that's going to be taken off. Well, this month, uh, toward the end of the month, and um, it really focuses on the personal evangelism of a of, of pastor. Um, I've seen that's been a great lack because the pastors usually tend to uh, find themselves only around believers or they have such a tight schedule. They, they can't find time to go out and do other things. And there's other reasons, too. And so just trying to work with them through a mentorship program um, to, to get them to a place where they can be active evangelists. As Paul told Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. It's, it's an important thing. Um, and, and so the, I can't wait to see what can happen from that. Um, that's pretty exciting. Sure. Yeah. I, kn I know that you said that your ministry is uh, donations um, driven, mm -hmm. uh, supported. If I wanted to support financially, either as a church or as an individual, where would I go to do that? 
Well, I think the easiest way uh, is probably just go to brainsandbibles.com. That's easy to remember. It's all spelt out. Uh, nothing fancy about it. Just brainsandbibles.com. And right in the top, you'll see have a donate tab. And you can click on that and um, it'll be a very convenient method to, to, to pay. There's other ways too. Uh, they can always reach out to me, brainsandbibles at gmail.com. So same, same easy formula there. Um, and just ask if there's, you know, if they want to, to mail a check or if they want to use some other payment method or something, there are other options, but, um, that'd be the quickest and easiest way. Great. And, and all this thing, all these things that uh, Joel has talked about, we will have both in the description of the video as well as on the show notes too. So, uh, you can go back and click on live links and, and so forth. Uh, you also have the option of donating through the foundation. So if you want to kind of do it anonymously, Go ahead and send the donation to the foundation and make a note in it for Brains and Bibles, and we will make sure that that gift gets uh, gets sent to, to Joel. So, That's awesome. any Thanks. any last comments or anything? The last thing you want to tell us we didn't cover before we wrap this mm-hmm. up? I would say that um, you know, as, as uh, whoever's listening, just um, analyze yourself, analyze the body that you are in, you know, the body of Christ, uh, local, and uh, just think to yourself: Are we? Is this who I am? Is this who we are? Uh, people that are sharing the gospel, that are getting together and making disciples, you know, teaching people to be just like Christ. Um, it, it, do I have the tools necessary um, to study the Bible? Can I, do I feel confident that I, I know the word of God? Um, you know, is that who you are? If some of those things are lacking, then please reach out and I'd love to help. Um, I'm not trying to twist arms for money or anything either. I, I'm, I'm here to help. Uh, anyone that knows the business knows you don't do this for the money, <laughs> but money is required to make it happen and to do it well. So there's that balance there. But but just analyze that and just see if maybe I could help you. And um, some people have doubts and they they're worried about maybe a denomination or something like that. Uh, I would say just just reach out and talk to me, and you'll you'll find that there there can be help. And I'd love to help. Great. Well, Joe, thank you so much. That's some great information. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, if you got any questions or if you'd like to learn more about Brains and Bibles, you can see their contact information here on the screen. And like we said before, you can also find it in the show notes of this episode on our website or in the description of this YouTube video. On behalf of Brains and Bibles, Joel Willoughby and Partners in Ministry, I want to thank you for joining us. And until next time, let's get out there and serve as Christ serves.